Hi everyone welcome back I've had a few patrons ask me to paint some insects in watercolor so this week I painted a butterfly for them video I'll show you how I painted a few different parts of the butterfly now if you'd like to see the full tutorial including how I painted the background you'll have to head on over to my patreon page the tutorial there is about an hour and ten minutes in length and you'll have access to the line drawing some progress photos and my finished painting the link is in the description of this video and as always, I've listed all the paints and brushes in the description below. I've mixed up some grey paint here with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I've just added a bit of water to it so it's not too dark. And I'm going to start painting on this section just here. And I've got my Da Vinci Maestro brush here. This is a double zero. And I'm going to use it to pick up some of the grey paint. I dab off the excess paint and I'm just going to start painting onto the dry paper. I'm painting on Arsh's hot pressed watercolour paper here and the reason I've chosen the hot pressed is because the butterfly's got lots of little tiny hairs on it and it's easier to paint these hairs on the smooth paper rather than the cold pressed paper. So I'm just painting some flicks with my brush just holding it right up on its tip so that I get that nice fine point. I've got some phthalo blue paint ready on my palette as well. I'm going to drop that onto the damp grey paint in a moment just to blend with the grey. So while that's damp I'll just pick up a little tiny bit of this phthalo blue and I'll drop it onto the damp grey paint. Now phthalo blue is a very rich staining colour so you want to use it sparingly. Just mix water with it so that it's not so vibrant. So just continuing on with the hair. This is a very hairy little butterfly. So I'm just flicking my brush and I'm leaving some white paper showing. So I'm coming back the other way, away from the leg. And before that dries, I drop a bit of the phthalo blue onto the damp paint. And that just adds some interest to the grey. So moving down onto the wing now, I'm just starting to paint some of the grey shadows that I see on the wings. So I'm just using the watery grey that I mixed up at the start. So this is a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm just trying to keep it fairly light in colour value. And these shadows will sit underneath the brown patterns that are on the wings. Now before this grey paint dries I'm just going to drop some phthalo blue on there. Just like I did on the body of the butterfly. So this is just a touch of the phthalo blue. So up here I've dampened the paper where I'm working and I'm just using that grey paint just to run it along the pencil line there and then it just bleeds back onto the segment because of the water on the paper. Just dotting a couple of lines up into the middle of the segment and that moisture on the paper just keeps all my paint edges soft and fuzzy. So if I was to paint that on dry paper I'd get a hard sharp edge on my lines and I just want a soft fuzzy edge. So I just run it down the other side of this segment and then the paint just bleeds away from the edge. Now I'm starting to paint on some of the brown markings. So what I'm using is burnt umber and I've 
painted on damp paper, just a light wash of the burnt umber. And while this paint's still damp, I'm coming back around the edge with some heavier pigment just to darken around the edge of the shape. I do the same thing here. So I washed on the lighter burnt umber first and then before it dries I use some heavier pigment around the edge. So here I'm doing a similar thing. I'm calling them the veins of the wing. I've just painted the watery burnt umber and now I'm painting the darker pigment along the right hand side edge. And that just creates a shadow along the right hand side and raises the veins up. Here I'm using the watery burnt umber again to start painting on the patterns that are on the wing. So this will lie underneath the darker colour that I'm going to put there. I'm just painting on the dry paper. Just with the watery burnt umber. I'll do the same thing in the next segment. And this just sits over the top of the grey shadows that I painted earlier. So now I'm painting on the pattern that's on the wings. I'm just using little tiny strokes of my brush and I'm using the burnt umber and I'm doing this on the dry paper. So here the paper is dried. I'm just painting over the top of my earlier wash. Some darker pigment this time. Just little strokes up and down, up and down. That way I get that jagged edge. Just painting over my pencil line. So it's time consuming, but it looks quite effective when it's finished. I'm just darkening the parts of the pattern that are in the shadow here. So I'm painting over the top of what I've painted, just with some darker pigment, just where it sits on top of the grey, because that's in shadow there. So here I'm painting the veins on the back wing, just the same way I did it on the front one. I paint the watery burnt umber first, and then before it dries, I paint the darker pigment down the right hand side. And this just raises the veins up and makes them look rounder. I'm just running some burnt umber down the outside edge of the back wing now, just on the dry paper. And then when that dries, I come back with some Payne's Grey this time and I'm only painting half of that area now. So I want the burnt umber to sit to the left of it. And as I move away from the body of the butterfly, I just water my paint down so it's not so dark. I want it to be darker up near the body where the flower is, just to maintain the focus up there. Here I'm painting the leg. I've just wet it with some water and I'm going to run some Payne's Grey on the bottom edge just while the paper's still damp. Same here, I'll wet this little part of the leg and I'm going to run the Payne's Grey. This time I'll run it down either side of the leg. Now for the antennas, I'm just using Payne's Grey again here, just painting on the dry paper, using my brush right up on its tip. Coming back onto the wing of the butterfly here, I've just wet this area with water where the blue is and I'm just deepening the thallow blue here. I've done the same thing here, I've 
dampened it with water and that just keeps all my paint edges soft so I don't get any hard lines. If you want to know more about soft edges and hard edges when you paint with watercolour, I have a video here on YouTube that might explain it better for you. So I've gone ahead and I've painted the background. And now I'm just dropping just the last few little drops of thalo blue here and there. And there's my finished painting. Thank you for watching. As I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to improve your painting technique or just learn some new techniques, I've got lots of tutorials on Patreon now and I'm adding more of them every week. Now watercolour is not an easy medium to use, but when you start to understand it better, it is such a joy. I've painted in other mediums, but none have given me the amount of pleasure that watercolour does. So I'd love to share that joy with you. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week with a new tutorial. Of tutorials on Patreon now. <coughs> and my voice is going. <coughs>